Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show, and on this episode, we're reviewing the new series by Amazon called The Boys. The Boys! The Boys. <laughs> so this is going to be a spoiler-free review for the first part, and then we will let you know when the spoilers start to kick in. So if you haven't seen it yet, don't worry. We won't throw out any spoilers without a warning. So this is a series about superheroes... And just as I thought I was kind of getting sick of the superhero genre with, with you know, the, the completion of Marvel series, etc., this, I totally love this series. It's in, the, the basic premise is, yeah. is, what would it be like if, if superheroes actually existed? So in... Well, in socially, meaning like... Socially, if absolutely. If you have real people as superheroes with all of the messiness that that would imply mm -hmm. and not the sort of sanitized, you know, Boy Scout goody two-shoe superheroes that we get primarily from Marvel and DC. So it's a right? deconstruction of superheroes, yeah, basically. absolutely. Yeah, which I like a lot. I always love deconstructions. It makes you think about, you know, the genre and what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. And it's a great thought experiment because, you know, like in um, the, the, the Marvel and DC universe, you have like a dark superhero is somebody like Batman or... Uh, Iron Man. They're still ultimately totally good guys. So you just have different versions of good guys as the superheroes. Right. But don't don't forget about the super villains. I mean, they have the, super villains. Right, they're, they're, as really, well. they're really bad yeah. superheroes. You can look at them that way as yeah. well. Right, but you have superheroes and super villains pretty much you know, right. well kept apart. It's very binary. There's not many there's not too many shades of gray in, in the good guys. The good guys are good. They may be a little bit dark, but they're still good superheroes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, traditional Traditional comic books and movies, like they flirted with that a lot, mm -hmm. um, but the boys goes headlong into that. You know, mm -hmm. like you, you know, the, in reality, it's kind of like Game of Thrones characters. Well, who's a good guy and who's a bad guy? Like, there's there's maybe a couple of people in Game of Thrones that actually are like they're good. That's a good guy. Yeah. But, but then we, everyone else is in those those shades of gray where they could be right. a good guy in one day and a bad guy the yeah. next day. Well, we have to say that the Watchmen is another superhero genre uh, franchise where the superheroes are gray. They're mm -hmm. all pretty gray. Uh, but this goes even further than the Watchmen. So in this, uh, the superheroes are corporate. You know, they are run, marketed by corporations, by a particular corporation, Vought. And, the, and we learn right away that these are the, the superheroes themselves are all about marketing. And... Uh, they're yeah, not, social media. Like, yeah, you know, social how, media. Many, how many points are you up today? You know, by, right. by certain things, and and the company that uh, manages the super, they're literally superhero right. managers, but they're also running them. Um, you know, they they say on the show many many times, like, oh yeah, your points are up today. You know, right, you're, right. You're, the, because of last night. Closely. Right. Yeah. They care. They care more about their proceeds from the superhero movies that they start in, I right. guess, rather than how many people did they save today? Today, and that was a big right. shocker. For Starlight, who goes in there and she sees that, and it's, and it's like that's what their focus is, and it's kind of you know it's it's one of the very one of the many things that smacks her in the face of of reality of, of these superheroes. Right, because some these are p random people with superpowers. Basically, they're random in that you know they weren't chosen for their character, and then there's a lot of douchebags, yeah. you know, who end up having superpowers, just like there would be in the real just world. Like right. real yeah. And then a lot of guy douchebags. Yeah. Like, if you take someone who's kind of douchey to begin with and then you give them superpowers, imagine how much of an asshole they would become mm -hmm. at that point, right? So that there is the power corrupting aspect to this as well. Like, hey, I'm a superhero, you know, you're, you're literally master of the universe. Why would you take crap from anybody? Of the, course, the, yeah. the sense of privilege would be overwhelming in somebody. And then you, you, know, you do get to that, which does get explored a little bit in like with the X-Men with Magneto of... Ordinary people are not even the same species anymore. Right. Right. They have they lose all sense of connection with humanity at the extreme end. Um, but in Magneto's case, he he was pushed to that. I yeah. Mean, he, you know his origin story is so horrific. You know Magneto definitely was corrupted yeah. almost by how horrible and he has redeeming qualities. But yeah. he's a villain. Yeah. He's, he's, Magneto's he's not a, a hero. He's a villain. He's a villain. He's actually a sympathetic villain. Right. Right. Which you do get in in the um, in the standard, I think, superhero genre. But this is this is not this is different. This is evil superheroes. This is people that are presented as superheroes but are actually villains. Right. Which it, you know, again, it mirrors the real world. Yeah. There, there's yeah, something yeah. you know when you watch this, it's visceral, and you feel like, you know, it doesn't feel like the whole thing is not funny. The whole thing isn't serious. It has a very real ring mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. And don't forget, this is kind of like a tripod. We've got the the 
the superheroes slash villains. You've got you've got Vought, who is the media company that that runs them, that mm. manages them. Uh, super rich, totally in control. Every all the superheroes have contracts with them, and they it's all about the bottom line, how much money. And then the third leg is really the is the, the boys, the titular the boys, yeah. right. and and that's and that's a great crew of people. Um, so they are the foil for the superheroes yes. for various reasons. They are trying to to take them down. Yep. They're trying to expose the, the corruption in the superheroes. Yep, and it done with amazing writing. Uh, mm -hmm. The cinematography is fantastic. The acting, I mean, the acting is fantastic. Oh, yeah, this is like, you know, I, about partway through, I started to realize how good the casting was. And when you watch the subsequent episodes with that notion, the casting is perfect. I mean, right. some of the care and the acting to go along with the casting is, is also fantastic. Carl, is it Urban? Carl Urban, 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 yeah. Oh my God, I love that dude. Out of the park. To death. Yeah, he, yeah. In go an Bones. interview, he said he was, um, when he was reading the script, he was blown away. He was like, are we really going to do this? Like, we're doing this? <laughs> he was so impressed with yeah. how loose the how script was. It was, it was. It's yeah. rated R. This is a full-on rated R. Yeah. And, right. and another comment he made, which is exactly how I feel, he said, all the good writing is happening on TV now. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, that's the, you want to yeah. see character development, go to a TV show. Well, I mean, it is a great format because like, this is only eight episodes. I have a little bit. I wish you know, we would go back to the 10 or 12 episode you know, series. Uh, eight episodes, I feel, is a little, feels a little rushed. It's not taking full advantage of the medium, but it is so much better than a one and a half to two hour movie. Oh my God, yeah. eight hours. We have eight, eight hours. hours to develop these characters, and they keep it. They're not stretching it out by any means. They are they are keeping the pace moving. They're you know the pace at which they are revealing information, deepening the plot, deepening the characters. They're really taking you on a journey, yeah. and, and I like that. You can tell when the good showrunners, good writers, are thinking about not just telling a story, but managing the experience of the audience. Where it's like, what does the audience know at this point? What mm -hmm. are they thinking? How are we going to misdirect them? And then we're going to slowly do this reveal of what's really going on. Yeah. And, and you're constantly having your mind blown as to as to the deeper yes. and deeper unfolding. So it's that which requires telling the story out of sequence, right? You're getting flashbacks to what happened. It, you're starting in right. the middle of the story and it's kind of evol evolving both ways. It's yeah. masterful. It's when not, it's, you know, right. if you pull it off, it's great. It's not predictable. This is not yeah. a predictable yeah. show. Not at all. And on top of all that, there's something happening with TV now. It's it's we got to stop calling it. It's not just TV. Like yeah. it's definitely movies, right? It's a one and a half hour, two hour format. They're telling you know most of the time you go see a movie, it's a movie and it's a standalone movie. Sometimes you know there's more than one movie, but each each movie yeah. has to be a discrete thing by itself anyway, right? But with TV, modern TV. It's at the level of movie making. Yeah. The, the, well, the budgets are certainly going right. up. Right. The no special effect, effects yeah. are there. The writing is, uh, I dare the say, in a lot of cases, it's all there. It's, yeah. it's you're watching an extended movie. Yeah. But the thing that they don't do, and I like it, is they don't pepper it with special effects. You're not getting like blown away by not gratuitous gratuitous things. special effects. It's, yeah. It's it it's actually like a, down to a much more sane level. Yeah, right. So the, the special effects and the violence are in service to the story and the plot, not right. for their own. So, oh, you've got to blow me away because it's a blockbuster movie. I agree. Right. I think in, in a lot of ways it's a, it's a superior medium. Than, right. And the than, violence is adult. Keep that in mind. Yeah. There's some, some but, gross stuff happening, which is wonderful. But it's not really, you can't have it be under the, the you know, the, it's like a misnomer to say these are just TV shows. At this point, they're mm, they're right. ex extended movies. At this point, like it's it's just the, the two are crisscrossing. The concentric yeah. circles have crisscrossed. It's now. flipped. I remember years ago the movies where the, the the A team went to the movies, and if you were relegated to the TV, you were like B you know B C actors. And but it's not it, true anymore. It's not true anymore. There's really a much more flow between the two. And if you want, like you said, Jay, if you want to see great great uh, movies, cinema stories, it's on TV. Yep. So, I mean, it's a tro it's a kind of like. At this point, it's a cliche that this is the golden yeah. age of Not TV. Not that there aren't great movies still, but and, True. and it is. I wonder if part of it is that you know the the movie making industry is worried that people aren't going to movies as much anymore. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, they're staying at home, Especially and so they're saying, "Well, if that's where TVs. the people look are, look at your your TVs yeah. today, 4K. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. So yeah, they're right, so scared. If they're that's worried. where the people are. Then that's where we're going to feed them yeah. their content yeah. to put the money into that. So if you're looking for a show uh, to binge. And you like superhero movies, even if you feel like you're kind of done with the genre, I would still recommend The Boys. It's a great fresh look at superheroes. It's good storytelling. They, I think, I really have no major complaints. I've thoroughly enjoyed, 
you know, the, the, the first season, and they were picked up for a second season already, yeah, I understand. Before, the, before it even premiered, yeah. it was picked up. It's on Amazon Prime. Just watch it and then come back and now listen to the rest of yeah, our Yeah, so review. from this point forward, spoilers galore, so <laughs> to be warned. Um, let's talk a little bit about the source material. This is a, a comic book series uh, written by... Is it Garth Ennis? Yep, Garth Ennis, who gets a writing credit on the series, and, and Derek Robertson, Robertson, who also did the illustrations. Right. Uh, which is done. It was, you know, the, the comic book series is completed. It took, takes place between 2006 and 2008 in the, in the, the, the story itself. So, you know, it, it's interesting to compare the source material to the yeah. show and mm -hmm. what they changed and what's different. I know there's going to be purists out there who are fans of, of the comic who are like, oh, but I'm in love with Frenchie as he is in the comic, yeah. and now I'm not getting that right. in the series. But you, ha my opinion, you got to put that aside. The source, this is not just a, a scene by scene, you know, Recre retelling, recreation, yeah. retelling of the comic. This is a new story, just using that as source material. And there are, there are, they made all the changes that they felt they needed to make to make it work better for this medium. Meaning, and I think they succeeded, right? I, I, I agree with many that I'm aware of. Oh, God, yeah. I think they did a, a perfect job. Right. I mean, it, like as an example, the, the TV show starts earlier than the comic does. Like, yeah. In the comic, they were already a group. In the TV show, you know, we're seeing or, more origin of how people got yeah. into the group. Like Huey, how did Huey get involved with these guys? He's right. clearly not like the other guys. So, and, and the female was already part of the crew. Right. Can we call it yeah. the female yeah. of the species? Yeah, they I call her the female. To. Yeah, the female in the comic. I, I, yeah. I, you know, it's funny. Like, now that we know their origin stories, it would be weird to not know, especially her origin story. Like, yeah. Like, because she's so feral in the TV mm. show. Like, you know, I guess when the comic picks it up, she's still kind of feral, but she's... There's a relationship. But there's there. already a relationship there. But I think yeah. it's so much... You get so much more out of knowing that she is this super dangerous, semi-loose cannon. Right. You don't know what she's going to do. And Frenchie in the comic apparently was more rambling, like speaking in half French, half English, you know, kind of more feral in, in a way. But they had to make it more relatable in the series. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, love which his I character. Understand. He's, he's smart. Yeah. He's a smart, savvy character. You don't realize that he, he, he notices things. And that's yeah. a, he makes him very, very intriguing. Um, I like the way they rolled out um, Homelander's personality mm -hmm. in the series. So yeah. in the comic... The original Starlight's introduction to the Seven, she basically gets raped by Homelander, Black Noir, and A Train. What about uh, Translucent? He, he wasn't. That was, they, those three were. He wasn't one of the three mentioned as okay. part of that initial. So first of all, that's harsh. You know. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily think that they were toning it down for the series, but so much as. That would have revealed a lot about those three characters right out of the game. That wouldn't have been good storytelling. It would, yeah. So, for the, whereas in the in the TV series, like the whole, at very very first, you think Homelander he is the goody two shoes of the naive yeah. goody two shoes of the group. Well, Butcher says it like that. No one's yeah. got anything on him. He seems to he's, be the real he's deal. Squeaky clean. Yeah. And then we see him take that plane down. Like, oh shit, he's a murderer. He yeah. just. Straight up yeah, murdered these he, guys. He's, he's a bad guy. And I love how he, he had a little mini arc in that first episode. Because I want yes. I remember thinking, I want him to be one of the good guys. I want him to be good. Sure. And then at the end, he's clearly not good. But then over this, the entire season, he's got another little arc where he goes through a, a subtle change. You think he's that, a little bumbling. You think he's bumbling. And he actually in the comic, he actually is not quite competent, not quite intelligent. Yeah. And they, they've amped that up a little bit in the in the show to make him a little bit more cunning, a little bit more intelligent. But initially, I thought he was kind of bumbling. <laughs> But, but he's not. This guy is that was done on to, ball. totally he's deliberate. Yes. So, uh, you know, I think the uh, the right way to look at this is that Homelander was putting that on. Yeah, my interpretation yeah. is yeah. he's smart and cunning, and this persona puts people at ease. Right. And he he does that in a very calculating way. Even Madeline Stillwell, who's managing him, treats him like a child. Right. And, Absolutely. And you think at first that oh my god, the guy really is a child, but then at, by the end you're like, no, no, that was all an act for her sake. Maybe not though. To put her at ease. Wait, I don't know. Maybe I think not. So. Maybe not because we Everyone we, underestimates him. That's a good place to be in if you're very Totally savvy agree. Guy. I totally agree, but I also think that he may have been getting something from her because mm -hmm. you know, he didn't have a mother. Yeah. He had a he had a laboratory upbringing. He was brought up not even like he he really didn't have parents. Yeah. So you know, I, I totally related with him seeing comfort in yeah. a woman like. But he's dysfunctional, no doubt. Yeah. he's dysfunctional. But that doesn't mean that's not incompatible. It doesn't mean he's also managing that relationship more than we thought. Right. And he was more in control than we thought. Yeah. Of course, you know, at the end, once you, once you see the the last episode, 
he has no problem killing her because mm -hmm. she lied to him. She he, she served his purpose. Right, and we knew that was coming, right? Yeah, right you knew when at that point. His head yeah. is on her lap, and oh, she's yeah. like, all right. No more lies, he, he says to yeah. her, and she's like, "No more lies." And I knew that's yeah, it. But then you she says, done. "You know that that uh, there was a miscarriage, and his eyes open up, and you realize he knows she, she's lying. That's yes. it. She's done right at that moment. Yep. You realize it right she's there. Done. Then he goes back, and do you think he killed that scientist? He said he, oh, yeah. he said he squeezed he's, the information yeah, out of absolutely. Oh, yeah, I think he's that's toast. It. Yeah. So my question is: Was Homelander preparing? things was he spinning plates to jockey himself into this position you know i don't think that homeland it didn't seem right that homelander would just be stumbling into i think he in other words he has a goal in mind yeah and he's spinning things to get to where he wants to go so i mean the thing is you look back over the season with this idea that he's calculating and it all makes more sense that's right. why i firmly believe yeah. that so for example he um destroyed the airliner that crashed into the ocean and then at first you think it was an accident. Like, how could he not know that his light beam was going to destroy the console? Mm -hmm. Of course he knew. Yeah. He knew that he was killing all those people. And he didn't delay a second convince, telling Maeve, we got to go. We're done here. There's nothing we could do. And she's trying to say, but, but, but we got to say, can't you, can't you like slow it down or whatever? He's, he's like, no, no, no. He, so he, he, that wasn't an accident. That wasn't a failed mission. That was his mission. Th this was no motorboat accident. Yeah, right. No that was, his accident. mission was to take down that plane, yeah. his internal, internally, and then spin it as if, if they had only looped it, us in earlier. What a great idea, Steve. I didn't think of that. Because I was really, deliberate. I really thought that they would, have, they would have saved those people if he could. I thought that he kind of did botch that. But the fact, the idea that he didn't botch it, that the whole thing, including his reaction to the, yeah. the jet crashing, he was thinking, I'm just going to put myself in he the limelight. He didn't light. save it. Yeah. That was the plan. I, I, I think that was the plan from the beginning. And again, he took it upon himself to take down the plane with the congressman in it, you know, mm -hmm. the mayor of, of, of was it Baltimore. Yeah. That was, you know, he, he totally, he disc and then he's the one who's been creating the supervillains. Yeah. That's that, him. That was a big. That was a big reveal. Think about that. That's that he is calculating. He is from the if beginning. You, if, you, is. if you strip away his behavior, yeah. his, right, his buffoonery, you strip that away, and you just look at what he's done. He's been masterminding the whole season. Yeah, yeah. He, it's all him. Really Forget is. about it. everything else. Yeah, that's is a right. I mean, he's, where's he getting the V from? The, the the company makes it right. So he's been he's helping himself to it. Yes, he so it, not taking it though because because my theory and I think Steve you you share this with me. Uh, they I think that he was the very first hero and they somehow got V the V compound from him. That's well that's your speculation. All, but we, yeah. that's not, the, it's right. not in the story. We don't know yet. That. It's not. That, we don't know yet. We don't, we don't know, know that. that. Yeah. Don't know that at all. Well, I don't know if that's in the all comics. Right. right. So how do you explain this though, Steve? He they saved that plane. They he killed he killed the terrorists on the plane. And then everything was fine until there was one more terrorist in the in the ca in the crew Which cabin. He, he could see through walls. Okay, so he so he had to know. Yeah, but how about before they got to the plane though? He knew that there was. He knows the saw, whole plane. There's a guy there that he knew. Yeah, everything. He why was the whole thing out? Why wouldn't he? Yeah, you course, can see okay. through walls. You're going to go into a plane blind when you could have easily have scanned yeah. the whole thing. He had to know there was a pilot, a terrorist in the cockpit. So I wonder what he then. I wonder what he would have done if there wasn't a terrorist in the. Whatever he would have, have done, done something else. All right, and I liked how he. I liked how he. Uh, she. I like how Maeve said to him, "Well, let, let's just. Can't you fly the plane down like we've seen Superman do yeah. a bunch of times? And well, and can't you just take people one by one? And he had to an answer for every one. And he that had, was great because there was another layer there because his answers were correct. You know what I mean? So you because right, yes, so you you can't maneuver a plane with two hands. I mean, it's not a matter of strength. The, the, it's there's structural, no structural integrity. It's structural integrity. That, that is, you would have just ripped the skin off that jet. You would not be yeah. able to manipulate. It's not a toy. You know what I thought about? That's, I thought about like the fact that they would add a harness to the, a jet just in case they needed yeah, a superhero. superhero harness. Yeah, like a superhero one, so he can control the plane. That, that's what I was there's thinking. Like, like, play, this, is, this is where you grab the plane by. Yeah, right yeah. Here. It's this, this handle. That's true. Yeah. And Design I, planes to be special. I love. I love that they actually address structural integrity because to me, that's that's the biggest complaint I have about superheroes. Because yeah. like, oh, somebody's falling, and the superhero flies in, holds out their arms, and and catches somebody and stops traveling them. at terminal velocity. It's like two steel bars yeah. having a body <laughs> fall onto it. I mean, if you really want to save somebody falling, you'd have to slow. You have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Catch them and decelerate. But what's them. So great addressing it, I think, is wonderful. It, but yeah. but we have a villain basically using these correct statements yeah. as a way to justify not being a hero. Right. And so you're, there's this dual yeah. duality yeah, to that. Was, explanation. It was a beautiful scene. It, it was, was very it, very it was good. And during scene. that scene, which happened, was probably arguably one of the best scenes, if not the best yeah. scene in the whole season. Um, you know, he he said that I can't do it, and I was thinking to myself. As well, like maybe he doesn't want to even attempt doing it because he didn't want to leave telltale signs on the, the yeah. airplane that he did it. Yeah. But man, that cockpit, 
Anybody that knows what to look for will know that he was in that cockpit. Yeah. Well, he has the deep covering for him on, on that sort of thing. Yeah. The deep knew about the other plane. But that scene was also where we get the first look at, at uh, Queen Maeve's character. Mm-hmm. That we, when you realize that, oh, she, there's some person there who cares. Right. And, she, right. and from that point forward, you, you, know, you see her progression of she's not happy. Yeah, and no. then of course you learn that she was Starlight, you know, at the beginning of her career, mm-hmm. and and the company ate her soul bit by yeah, bit. Yeah, she, she, she's and cynical and resigned, left. and yeah, her talks with uh, with Starlight were very revealing. Yes. you know, some people were saying that she was acting a little bit like a big sister, and I I, yeah. I agree. Yeah, she was trying to help. Um, but Starlight is is essentially disgusted with her. She's just yeah. like, are you kidding me? But like, at the, like, by the end, though, she gets she gets a little sympathy for her. Yeah. she realizes, oh, holy shit. That she's me in twenty years, yeah. you know, or whatever, 10, yeah. 15 years. Yeah. And and she basically Maeve saves her from going down that path because she was clearly heading down that path. Yeah. Yeah. And that that talk with Maeve turned her, and that's why she ended up, you know, saving Huey and the others at the end, yeah. because she realized I'm a superhero, I'm gonna be a superhero. That arc of hers took many much longer in the comic series. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They kind of compressed it. I think they you mean they, Starlight's are Starlight. Yeah, she in the Starlight's comic arc, she they, was, they accelerated it in the in the, into season one. I think she was much more innocent for a lot longer. For a lot longer. longer. I think they needed to her to be stronger quicker. Because mm-hmm. she's a weak character initially. Yep. And you know, the, you know, you have to realize it's it's amazing that in just ten years how much things have changed. You know, it's twenty nineteen now, it's not two thousand and six. Yeah. We're now post Me Too. Yep. And you know, one of the negative things about the series is that it's very male dominated in many ways, but but it's hard to get out of that because it's making it's basically commentary on the genre which is male dominated. Yeah. I mean look at the look at the first just the first episode alone. You have two two primary women and one of them is basically raped by a superhero in the office and the and the other one is basically exploded by a superhero on a male superhero on drugs to further to further his plot. I mean it's really it's really depressing to think about, you know, but the, the state of. Uh, I think is a very weak character. But I think yeah, it's all it's, it's, really, it's all wonderfully written, though. It's it I is. think it's deliberate because th- this TV show is holding up a gigantic mirror to yeah. reality, to corporate America, right. To male chauvinism, you know, to male yeah. dominance, to political America, to political America, to and, religious America. And I, and I, and I love all the there. message. I love the message because clearly, we're, we're, the message is going to be over time that that the uh, you know the, the little guy. You know the people that have no power can can fight and and mm-hmm. eventually prevail, and and that's how the the boys are. They are these are just regular people. Jay, what I love about this is that it shows that how you can have these unpowered normal people. You get the little guy fighting against the the, the superheroes or mm-hmm. fighting against the authority and eventually prevailing. I assume that they're going to prevail at some point. Well, we or hope, yeah, at, we, at we some level. But it shows, assumptions. right? But it shows that you can fight. You you got to try to fight against. The powers that yeah. be. I mean, they're fighting against, like I said, the li- the list of the th- areas that this show touches. They're fighting against. So we're talking about the boys, right? Mm-hmm. So the boys are fighting against. They've all been superheroes. Per- they've the all government. Been, they've been personally the wrong, right? So there, there and is superheroes. Exactly, and re- and religious America. Yeah, because that's that's all in the mix there. That's yeah. that's where yeah. all the manipulations are happening. I have to say though, this is the first superhero story I'm aware of. Maybe some of our listeners will, will give us examples where they where they. Discuss explicitly the interaction between superheroes and religion. Yeah, right. You know, where, where's that imagine, been done? Yeah, because not just like oh, yeah, just vague reference to, to spirituality, to God or spirituality, yeah. or whatever. But an like, entire episode was kind yeah, of devoted it's, to it. It's, yeah, think about how they're explicitly saying we get our powers from God. We were chosen yeah. by we are God. Chosen yeah. by God. The whole, yeah. And one of the superheroes, Ezekiel, is a preacher. You know, right. and he's to one hundred percent interweaving his superhero ness and and right, and he's and, and he's and, stretch man, right? And he's stretch the guy man. That can there stretch was a, man. A, a really great moment when Huey was just before Huey, like starts the blackmail. Yep. Huey says, I need to talk to you. I need your advice, Ezekiel. And Ezekiel was kind of like, and he goes, I need Jesus's advice. And Ezekiel perked up because he's like. In that moment, to me, I took that like Ezekiel is saying, "Yeah, I'm pretty much Jesus." I'm yeah, or yeah. a spokesperson, direct yeah. Spokes- spokesperson. And man, I love the uh, that whole that place that butcher took Huey to that that wacky bar yeah. where they're, they're getting their weird on. Like that was so awesome. Like these people are they're degenerates, yeah. you know, not not because of their sexual orientation, but by the fact that they're not living true. Like yeah. you know, if you were gay, be gay. But the fact no, that but he's. 
He's pray. He's preaching. Pray the gay away. Yes, that's when what I mean. He's gay. Yes, right. absolutely. The hypocrisy. The hypocrisy. Did you see profound. that? The little superhero that runs and dives into the woman's vagina. Yes. I mean, when I saw that, I'm like, they're going there. <laughs> this this show is going to go there. I, <laughs> oh god, awesome, awesome writing. Just epic. Like the fact that they said we're we're going to shoot that. We're gonna we're gonna put that on TV. And man. you know, so here we are. Season one was great, in my opinion. And but the speculation about season two is amazing. They can go in so many different directions. They set up so much. I mean, well, Ho- Homelander can become an out supervillain. Yeah, and and, and have his crew and he, have a crew because how he's super making supervillains. And we don't know how many he has. We've seen one. Right. He's been he's been doing this for a while. Right. He might have a dozen. He might have a hundred. You never know. We they, don't know. And because again, if we go on the theory that he's calculating, which I think is the only you know interpretation here. Yeah. But the other thing is. But he could also stay um, in the, in the in, gray in dark. area. Yeah, he could stay. I think he's going to do that. Well, I yeah, think because the point, then he has the government on his side. But he also has. He the, can take over the government. He's There's got no Voight way, though. He's like he's, doing marketing for him yeah. and cleaning it up, and you know. So you're right. So if he diverges, it's got to be for a really good reason yeah. because that government tie. And he, you know, and he wanted it. He was actually, if you think about it. His when he killed all the people on the plane yeah. by his inaction or whatever his action or inaction. Um, then when he came up with the media, you know, and, and he did his whole like, you know, we're not going to let them do this. And, you know, he turned that whole thing around. So that's what got them into the military. Yeah. So you could actually say he orchestrated getting them into the military. Yeah, he wanted I did say it. that. Yeah. But, but I, you know, I just want to make it clear <laughs> okay. because at the beginning, you, you first think that Stillwell is the one that wanted it to happen. No. He might have even sold the idea to Stillwell yeah. eventually. You know yeah. what I mean? That's what I'm starting to think is he's been orchestrating this thing from so far So you back. think that Stillwell is the sort of the evil corporate, you know. Oh, in many ways, for sure. And in many ways she is, but then you realize that He's actually even worse than he's she manipulating is. He's her. manipulating he's, her. He's the devil on her shoulder. Yeah, he's been making it all happen. Sure. And so now so she's out of the way. He's the perfect supervillain. Yeah. Well, think about it. Think about it. He is a light-haired con man, fake populist, fake you know, um, a religious yeah. you know person who's using manipulating everybody in order to take control and the media and the media masterful at using the media you know the showrunner said this is very much a commentary on our time right. you know yeah. using this source material and updating it to make it a commentary on where we are right <laughs> now, now we don't know who they're talking about uh, who, we who have no idea been, but, but i mean even you know you could you could Put in any kind of yeah. topping to this thing you want. Is it, is he Aryan? You know, is yeah. this, does this go back to like white supremacy? Is this you know anything to do with there's communism? Whatever. Like it could. They, yeah, there's it, definitely it, the elitism there. He's, yeah. he's a yeah. racist against humans. Yeah. You know, in that way. And he, you know, I mean, he, he is such a, a like that final thing. The final thing that we see in the show is he brings Butcher. To, I mean, the reveal was amazing. Yeah. You know, that's Butcher's whole thing was this guy raped my wife. That that starts this that starts this whole thing. Butcher is basically probably the origin of the anti-hero movement. Yeah. If you think and, about and, it. And well, it's actually the woman who right, recruited right, right, right. Him. She, she recruited yeah. him. But but she recruited yeah. him. You're totally right, Steve. But she recruited him after the idea got into Butcher's head that his wife was raped and possibly killed. Yeah. But then we find out, like Homelander, for no reason, it was just a coincidence. But Homelander took advantage of that coincidence that he. Yeah. raped his wife and all that like oh wow this guy's trying to get one over on me by putting a C4 around Stillwell's neck I'll kill Stillwell and I'll bring him to the house yeah. where his wife has been he kept him alive just so we could have the pain of seeing that exactly. his, his wife was still alive living with his son you yeah know, with right her. and and if if and if Homelander is truly twisted which we know he is there's why would he kill Butcher yeah. why would he kill him go ahead I want you to be in pain now for years. Yes. I'm gonna, I think I'll, that's what's going to happen. And I'll dip on you, on you every once in a while just to just to you you know, just turn to the screws yeah. yeah. So, so I, I think like Butcher walks away from that. Yeah. Um, I don't know what's going to happen between him and Becca, his wife. Like yeah. you know, like he might not be able to emotionally recover. Uh, that, he may he may kill Becca. The Homelander may just kill her. Yeah. In we don't. We just him. don't we know. Don't know. Yeah. Oh, would he take away his son's mom though? I don't think. I don't so. know. I don't think Who knows? so. And then Bob. raise his son by himself. Who knows? This guy. This guy is pretty nasty. So we don't know. Yeah, nothing, um, not much would surprise now, you. Now, I have, I have some theories. This is what's beautiful about good writing because we're all now thinking. Speculating like, about what could happen. Yeah. First off, the show was a surprise after a surprise after a surprise. I couldn't predict it. So I doubt that we'll be able to easily predict what's coming in season two. But okay, A-Train might not be dead. 
Uh, we no, know the not. translucent is gone. We know that the deep is alive. The, the deep and the deep is having his own crisis, yeah. and you know because he's on the outs, so he <laughs> the, may be recruitable. The dolphin scene was, was so good the dolphin was when that great. dolphin flew through. I did not expect that at all. First off, I didn't expect him to be like talking sex to the dolphin. Like, yeah. like what is going on with this guy? Yeah. He can't get out of his own way. He's such a he's so bad at everything that he tries to do. Can't yeah. even save a lobster. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> he this blows guy. that. Yeah. But I do see, like, he might be redeemed. A train might be redeemed. Mm, a, a, I know he's on the fence, a but harder. He's 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 a bad guy. That scene when the deep had his pants down and they cut he's, to his yeah. butt. That's, that's I what, couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I, I was like, you, wow, I, you're really they're really doing this. Like he just dropped his pants. That like he hasn't, he hasn't even he hasn't been in a room with the girl for two minutes and he's dropping yeah, his pants. That's when it smacks you in the face that this guy is a Literally, total piece of crap. Yeah. And then he then he basically and then he essentially rapes her. I mean that's yeah, yeah that guy is. Uh, yeah, he is a complete. He deserved. Piece of I loved watching his fall because he to- totally deserved all of it. Yeah, he, he he was he became pathetic by the end of that season. He was really just well. A he kind of always shell. was pathetic. You just didn't realize. Yeah, it. he slowly right. revealed it. I mean, yeah. he but says to her, "I'm kind of number two. It's like you think, all right, so he's second, you know, because you're kind of taking it all on everybody's word right. at the, in the first episode of the first, you know, you're like, all right, and then you find out like he's a joke. Like he he was the guy that lo- he lost the job. Yeah, they just kicked him out because he wasn't that valuable. Like and he even mm-hmm. says it. He's like, you know, it's you know, I only do jobs that are near the water. Like I can be going. He wanted to just go on regular street missions. Yeah, and we never really got to see what he can do. We don't know mm-hmm. what he, we don't know what his talk re- to lobsters. He talked to lobsters. Yeah, yeah. but all right. I but the the actor's doing a great job. Um, you know, when he psycho trims his hair, everyone's like, whoa. You know, that's always a bad sign. You know, historically, Britney, Britney Spears moment. Yeah, <laughs> and. Um, I just, you know, I want to see them use these characters more because I know their history now. So it's more interesting right. if, you know, we see um, A Train. A Train might not be dead. And then what happens to him? Probably not, yeah. You know, I mean, he could take V again and, and fix his heart, but that might kill him too because he can get in that cycle. Um, but v, ca- yeah, v caused that. I mean, that's what's weird because the, the V actually turned you into a superhero. But what, you can't abuse it because then, it, then it's really kind of like a drug that will kill you. Yeah. So it can. Under the right circumstances, you know, it changes your DNA in some capacity to give yeah. you superpowers. Yeah, I, don't know if, I don't know how deep they're going to get into yeah. how it actually works. I think they got to leave that alone because it gets very, you know, mm-hmm. you don't want to go too too much into like you know, it, it's fantasy at that point because like no compound is going to do that. Even if it could, like one, the first thing I asked Bob, I remember going with this. Okay, so how are they going to explain where the energy is coming from? Right. You know, when when. Uh, Homelander shoots those beams out of his eyes. You know that's an, a, a massive amount of energy. Not yeah. a little bit. You know, so they did make one reference to it when A Train's trainer said, "You have to eat three thousand calories an hour." Right. When you're when you're active. that's insane. That's yeah. just like all you would be doing would be eating. I yeah. mean, right. I mean, three thousand calories an hour. Well, is I guess rough. you eat a lot of a bunch of cupcakes and that that adds up pretty fast. <laughs> and they did show it was funny is they did show uh, the deep eating a lot of junk food. Yeah. Maybe because right, right. yeah. they all they all probably have they're all having calorie rich meals, you know, nice mm-hmm. box of Twinkies, you know, would be a good 4 or 5000 calories right there. But that's a lot of calories, you know, that gets mm-hmm. expensive. It's a good chunk of your day. Just if you're a low level superhero and you mm-hmm. don't have the money, you might not be able to eat enough to even be up to full power. Yeah. You know? Hmm. Love it. So the, this story can go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, I really hope that they put the same, you know, finesse into season two. I see no reason why they, they won't. Um, and again, man, the, this show to me is on the back of Carl. Uh, Urban. Carl, he's just, he's amazing. He's fantastic. I love the I love Butcher him. is one of the coolest, scariest, you know, just broken, I broken mean, come characters. On, think of what yeah, this he, guy he's has totally, done. He's, he's darker than Batman. Mm-hmm. He, th- that guy's the whole world is just darkness, you yeah. know? And I like how he, on a, on, on a dime, he was like, okay, here we see you. Like, you're not in? Bye. You know, like, yeah. you, you don't want to come with me? You don't want to yeah. continue? Well, he, he was on a very narrow path to revenge, yeah. right? And he didn't even care if he had to kill himself. All mm-hmm. he wanted, at that point, he only cared about one thing, and that hurting, was hurting Homelander, hurting and Homelander. that was enough. So now we're going to see what's going to happen to what's, his character. Because yeah. his that, world's that, turned upside down. Yeah, that down. path is now over. He's going to have to re- redo himself yes. if he's going to survive. Himself, yeah. But now he may turn into more of a, a hero in that. It's like, okay, well, yeah. my vengeance thing is kind of done. But these, but these superheroes are really supervillains that I have to save the world. I'm right. A few people who really know what's going on. Yeah, and that's, that's key because we've learned that the CIA... They can't do anything. They can't yeah. make a move. Like, this is it. And, and I, the linchpin is going to be when Starlight, I think that Starlight is going to be like the new, 
somewhat leader of the group because she's going to galvanize yeah. that, re-galvanize those guys. I hope. We'll see. Again, I trust the writers. I'm ready for season two. They're shooting in November. Will no, be no, end, no. Be They're shooting November. now. The shooting will be oh, done they wrap, in November They wrap 1st. in November. Okay, so, yeah. that, that, that Probably that, next summer. Yeah, so they're probably sizing this up for uh, spring, summer. That's yeah. great. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm psyched. So, guys, go check it out. You know, if you haven't seen it and if you listen to this review... If you, you like superheroes, yeah. or even if you hate them, yeah. this would be, or you're just sick of them, I think this gives you such a twist on the, a the good classic good storytelling is good storytelling. Right. It, reinvigor it, it reinvigorates most people's superhero fatigue, because I, I got super excited. By the end of episode one, I was like, wow, this is really good. By the end of episode two, I was like, this is my favorite TV show now. Yeah. I love this show. I think it's powerful. I think it the, the, the fact that it's massive commentary on how screwed up modern day is, is mm -hmm. wonderful. The superheroes yeah. are great. The special effects are great. The acting is great. The casting is great. I mean, I, I, I don't have any negative comments. I never not have comments. I don't mm. have any negative comments. It, it was a perfect TV season as far as I'm concerned. Except this should be a little, little longer. A little yeah. longer. Four more episodes. Yeah, 12 episodes have been good. So if you like the show, you can go to Alpha Quadrant and the number six dot com. You can see our YouTube channel. You can become a patron. You can support us continuing to do this show. And we will see you in the sky. <laughs> Where? In the deep? In the deep, in the sky. No, invisible. Would you be invisible? What would your secret powers be? Um, super intelligence. Yeah. Because then, then you can create all the other powers that you want. I thought you were going to say luck. Man, luck. Luck is a good Luck, luck is, is great. Good, is a good Stan power Lee liked luck. Stan Lee, that, that was his yeah. pick. How about you, Steve? Um, I would like to be a biomancer. I would like to be a biomancer.